All right, good afternoon, everybody. You've got Andrew Lawless and Richard Smart over here on the Steel Point team. Which would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, good afternoon. I'm Richard Smart, and I am the uh, Senior Vice President of Sales here at Steel Point, and uh, looking forward to the presentation this afternoon. So we're going to ask for everybody to mute their mics as they come into the uh, the webinar, just so we don't get any feedback as we move along with the presentation. So. It's 103 right now. Um, I think we should probably get started. So how about we just kick it off by saying uh, welcome to the webinar and I hope you enjoy what we have to show you. So this webinar will be on a better look at field point and field service and project management as a whole. So we'll go to our next slide. About field point. So, oh, my apologies. So, Fieldpoint has been in the industry for 18 years now. We've been dealing with field service and project management software since day one. We have about 715 customers using our current system, and we we've just we we know what we're doing in this industry. We've been doing it for a long time, and we have had customers that have been here with us since day one. Rich, do you have anything to add on to that? Uh, certainly. So we primarily operate in about uh, six core verticals, and we'll get to that in a couple slides. And I think most of you uh, that we've seen registered for the uh, presentation would uh, would be housed in uh, one of those core market areas. And then you'll see a lot of feature function is built into the software um, that's specifically needed in those specific industries. So go ahead, Andrew, to the next slide, please. Perfect. So some common, some common challenges that we often face today in this market, field technician productivity and efficiency. We find that is a, it's a difficult thing to do without a field service software. And we definitely find that once people implement a field service software and they get the technicians to use it properly, then efficient, efficiency and productivity in the field definitely steps up from there. So what we also find is most of our clients tend to have you know, a financial system in their business, uh, potentially a CRM system, be it a salesforce.com or uh, Microsoft CRM or one of the others in the market, as well as uh, you know, other applications, be it monitoring solutions or work markets, things of that nature. So one of the things that we do uniquely well to bring all of that together is integration. So we have an application within the software that we call the data transformation services that allows us to be uh, coordinate all of those systems in our enterprise to work harmoniously together uh, to create the efficiencies to provide your customers the best possible uh, service and customer uh, service experience. All right, perfect. So on to our next slide, focus overview. So within our system, we will have three main different types of people. So we have our customers, we have our technicians, which will be the ones in the field using the, the mobile version of the app, and then we have our subcontractors. And our system is tailored towards those as well as your customers and technicians. We have a subcontracted streamlined relationship with them, so they'll be able to use our system with ease um, while being outside of the software. So for example, um, the combination of delivering our services via our in-house technicians where we would uh, efficiently dispatch those resources and provide them with their work. They have access to our mobile app, which can be accessed from any um, Apple or Google device, be it a tablet or a smartphone, uh, to see their work, complete their work. But also we have the ability for subcontractors to access that app. So we're gonna talk a little bit later in the presentation about how we manage the relationship between yourselves and third parties or subcontractors should you use them and how they can then use the, uh, the field point tool to then provide the feedback back to you also to utilize the checklisting capability so we can ensure that all the work is being performed uh, in the manner with all the items we wish done and be it a work order or preventive maintenance work order uh, via those checklists. Um, 
some of the other things to mention here uh, when it comes to processes, I just mentioned that the checklist and uh, the workflow and escalations and notifications that come out of the system. We also have a full capability of quoting uh, field service or project work from within the application itself. We also have the ability via the uh, transformation services to bring in quotes from third party quoting applications and generate work orders, contracts, or projects from those systems. Further to that, um, the feature set within the software that enables this, we've got our full resource scheduling calendar, our routing and GPS uh, capability within the software, and uh, we keep mentioning the checklisting capability and notification capability in the system. When we think about uh, our enterprises as a whole, what's absolutely key is that we're not just collecting this information for billing purposes, but we want to analyze our uh, business as well. So we have a full end user friendly, uh, tailorable business intelligence and analytics applications where you can literally drag and drop fields into your charts or into your tables to then analyze, you know, what was my resource utilization? What was our profitability by customer, by project, by contract, or by work order? All of that is built in with the out of the box business intelligence tools. Further to that, we keep discussing integrations. I talked earlier about work markets or labor markets, how we get subcontracted or third parties uh, resources to perform our work. We integrate seamlessly with many of those out of the box. And of course, the transformation services give us the ability to communicate um, seamlessly with any of the others that uh, you may be using. Financial and ERP and CRM integration is all part of uh, what we've built into the core delivery of the product. So for example, um, we have a very uh, seamless and tight integration to many of the ERPs, uh, specifically you know, NetSuite and some of the, uh, you know, the uh, older Microsoft platforms, be it, uh, you know, Dynamics GP or NAV or some of those other applications. The other thing that's quite emerging is uh, these days, it's the whole internet of things. As the devices that we work on in the field uh, become more intelligent and start sending messaging out to the internet, we're able to collect those messaging or messages or those error messages and actually generate work orders and put those in the queue of things to be performed based on notification from the devices in the field. Uh, I mentioned earlier that we uh, operate in about six to seven core verticals and uh, you can see what we have here. Um, some of them are a little broad reaching. Uh, you know, HVAC of course is a, a large one for us. When I look on the other side of this slide, uh, industrial equipment is, uh, is rather an all-encompassing one. Uh, when I say industrial equipment, we're talking about things like generators, pumps, um, you know, anything that uh, might require service that's, uh, you know, that's a piece of equipment in the field that we consider of an industrial nature. You know, fire and life safety, IT services like IP telephony companies, um, you know, facilities maintenance, medical device organizations, and of course, uh, last but not least, oil and gas. All, all of these, uh, the system has uh, built-in workflows and processes that are designed specifically for all of these industries, and we deploy them individually based on the industry that you're housed in. In a field service system, you need a quoting piece to be within that. So with our quoting tool in our system, you have the ability to make templates of quotes that you do often. And from those templates, you can turn them into work orders just like that. So when you have that template and you're turning it into a work order, any parts or tasks or any information that is on that will also be sent directly over to a work order. Further to that, with our integration to the ERP system, once that generated a work order, when the, uh, you know, the customer or subcontractor or whoever provided the quote to, uh, has accepted that uh, quotation, we push that across to a work order or a project, and we're able to then generate the uh, materials demand and the procurement of those materials to complete the job uh, appropriately. 
And as I mentioned earlier, you're not necessarily tied to utilizing our quoting system. We can integrate with multiple third-party uh, applications out there to provide our clients with quotations um, as needed. So flexible work order management. The system in a large revolves around the work order. So to have an unflexible work order in your system would not be a good idea. With our work orders, you have the ability to add many different pieces of information, whether that be your parts, expenses, any tasks you need the technicians to fill out on the field, in the field, you have the ability to do that from here. So now what Andrew's referring to is the system delivers with a full tailorable tool set. So you as end users are able to keep all the data, but only the data that's relevant to you on your work order forms. You can have multiple views of the forms so that, uh, you know, if a customer happened to be logging in via the customer portal, they could see a subset of the data that perhaps a dispatcher or a service manager or a technician might view. So you can have very different views of the form available uh, to whichever end user seeing only the data that's relevant to them, all, all done on a secured basis. So customer asset management, what we're referring to here is the equipment in the field. So we're able to track um, model numbers, serial numbers, descriptions of those items, track all the warranty against an item, subcomponents if necessary. We will have full service history as well as equipment location tracking. You can move those pieces of equipment around very easily and all of the history will follow. Uh, you also have the ability within uh, the mobile app to use the barcode scanning capability. So if we go and work on a new device or something we haven't worked on before, we can then scan the item and actually use the workflow to generate a uh, customer asset record in the system. So contracts and PNs. You can set up your contracts within our system to have any different service pricing that you need for this customer, whether that be time and materials or fixed pricing for the jobs that you have. You also have the ability to set up preventative maintenance schedules. So if you need to go to their site and do an inspection every two weeks or every two months, then these are things you can set up in the uh, contract PM. We, of course, also handle seasonal PMs. If we think about an HVAC company where they do a spring startup and a fall shutdown, which may have a whole different set of uh, steps or checklist items to be performed. Those are all uh, managed uh, in detail within our contract and PM application. And when you set up these PMs in the system, you can set them up to produce any work order or any layout for the work order that you need. So if you need a specific checklist on these seasonal PMs, then that's what you can set up in our system and it will automatically push it to a scheduled status of ready to be scheduled. And again, we have the ability here where we could create, say, a single work order per item for a PM, or again, like we're some, something like the medical device space, I could actually create a single work order with uh, a series of tasks for each piece of equipment that requires the preventive maintenance visit. The other thing we handle is larger scale installation projects. So I think if you were to go out to Capterra, you would see and look up service management software, you'd see dozens upon dozens of uh, software applications. Same if you were to look at project management software. What is unique to FieldPoint is that we do a good job or an excellent job in our opinion of both. And, uh, and that's kind of a unique feature to a, a service management software product. So you can handle large scale, long-term projects. We have a full job costing capability, full estimating and uh, tracking of actuals. Uh, we can escalate against uh, variances from estimates to actuals. So we can keep a, a keen eye on our projects and see how our successful we're being as we're going through the project as opposed to doing those analytics after the fact. So we can proactively make changes or, or communicate with our clients uh, should a project be uh, going in a direction that's not desirable. So next up, we have our mapping and routing. 
With this feature, we have the ability to see the location of the tech or where they're based out of. And from there, we can plan out their day with however many jobs that they have to finish for that specific day. So it will give them the most efficient route that they need to do. And if they have a, let's say a day that they're sick and they have 10 jobs planned out for that, then you can spread those jobs between the closest resources in that area with just the click of a button. So let's move on to the next slide, Andrew, so that we can see what that looks like. So you see here we have the map. We've selected a series of technicians which are now color coded. So when we look on the map, we can see where those technicians are and we can click on a single one and see what work orders they have. And the system then can give us the most uh, optimized route for them to go and perform their work. You also have the ability to manually change the route if you want to reprioritize the work that they have. Or if I wish to spread somebody else's work for say, as Andrew mentioned, a technician is, is sick or currently unavailable for a day, we can then see the other technicians who simply um, uh, click on the work order, right click and select a new resource uh, to take on that job. So next up we have resources, our resource calendar. And in this resource calendar, you can filter out the technicians that you see for that week by maybe their skills or their certifications or maybe where they're based out of. Another thing for this resource calendar is it's a drag and drop type of tool. So you see the work orders at the bottom of the screen and the work order that you wanna to give to, let's say Gloria, you would drag that up and place it into her calendar. And from there, it would do a real time sync and now Glory would have that work order in their phone. So you can then select which technicians or which area you uh, wish to view. So you get a manageable view of the resources within the calendar. You can also do full skill searching or regional uh, searching uh, to get the appropriate resources that you wish to view on that calendar. So between that and the routing capability, uh, you have multiple options for uh, scheduling your resources. Uh, to the work that needs to be performed. For our resource demand planner, if you're planning out a week in the future or a couple weeks in the future, then this would be the tool for you. You can plan out and give a technician a job and see if they have time to do that specific job by not scheduling it to them, but placing it as a hold in their calendar. So we have a full uh, capacity planning capability within the uh, tool set here. So again, we can see all the projects and work orders that are currently uh, active in the system, and we have the ability then to plan out amongst our pool of resources, or certainly understand whether we need to be ex uh, accessing our pool of subcontractors to meet our service obligation. So we have our advanced checklist capabilities. With this, you can attach photos, barcodes, any type of information that you need to hold against this specific checklist on a mobile-friendly device capability. So we have these automated checklists generated by you, the people in the company, and this will be created on an easy drag and drop system in which you can make these checklists, whether it be for a specific PM task that you need to do, like we said earlier, your seasonal inspection on a property, or you can make it as a troubleshooting checklist so the people in the field can troubleshoot pieces of equipment or do specific site assessments. And those checklists are uh, also capable of what we call smart listing meaning that if answer to question one was yes, then we might have questions two, three, four are different than if we answered no. So we can drive to the uh, conclusion or to the solution of a service call uh, simply by guiding the technician through those smart lists. And all of this is available in both online and offline capability on either a, uh, an Android or Apple-based uh, mobile device or tablet. Business intelligence, we mentioned this earlier. We're collecting large amounts of data and managing all of our dispatch and all of our uh, the work that's being performed in the field. Uh, and, and the thing we, we've heard for years of what people talk about the deficiencies in their operating systems is the lack of ability to extract the data or the reporting. So we, of course, have uh, dozens upon dozens of out-of-the-box kind of two-dimensional traditional reports, you know, job cost reports, 
technician utilization, all of those sorts of things that you would expect to see in a service product. This gives us the ability to then, the business intelligence to drill through to that. So as you can see in this slide, you've got the graphical view, but also you have the ability to just hit a button and see kind of a table or spreadsheet based view of that data where you can then start to drag and drop additional fields. So I can do profitability by customer, profitability by customer, by project, by work order. And we can just keep drilling down so that we can get the analytics that we need to, to truly understand uh, our successes in the business. Flexible workflow. So this uh, group of blocks and arrows is essentially the graphical display of what a workflow looks like. So every process, be it how a work order goes from its inception to its completion, or a project goes from start to finish, or a, uh, a scheduling process, or a timesheet management process, all of those have an out-of-the-box workflow associated with them. But you're able to identify what are the steps where we go from start to finish on any process in the application, and we can drive automated processes to happen on the entry or exit of any one of those statuses. So what that means, you know, to those of us around the table here is we can essentially model any business process that you have. And these are not static. So as you grow with the application over time, these workflows will also change. So you're able to modify your workflow processes and your business process to mirror exactly how you wish to do business. And so as perhaps you acquire businesses in, uh, in adjacent spaces, we can provide a different path of workflow to manage the different types of work that you do. So as well as workflow, we have a flexible design mode in which you can customize, or sorry, configure the, the screens that you see, whether that be on a work order, a project, a contract, you can design these screens to look exactly the way you want them to look. If you're missing a field on there, you'll have the ability to drag that on or hide pre-existing fields and show all the information that you need to show. And further to that, it allows you to relabel the menu entries and the table form. So if you're a company that uses the word ticket or incident rather than work order, you have the ability to universally change that in a single stroke uh, system wide. So we also provide customer portals, subcontractor portals, technician portals. All of these are fully accessible uh, from any browser anywhere. So a customer can log in on a secured basis. We can give them access to whatever information it is we want, be it service history and status of service, the ability to view their uh, aging receivables with us, reprint a work order or reprint an invoice directly from that portal. Uh, again, on a secured basis, you can provide uh, customers access to whatever amount of detail you'd like to from the uh, operational system. Another thing we do uniquely well here at FieldPoint is the interaction between uh, service providers and subcontractors. So many of you will uh, engage subcontractors for some or much, in some cases, all of your work um, to be delivered. And again, we provide a, a very user-friendly subcontractor portal where we can have a back and forth, uh, be it quoting or estimating capability. Uh, we can push work out to the work markets where subcontractors can bid on the work that they wish to do. And again, all of that uh, is visible to you as a service provider within our portal and to the subcontractors within their portals and we also have a very uh, cost-effective method of your subcontractors being able to take advantage of the mobile app so that we can get real-time information from the field in spite of the fact it's being dealt with by a third party on our behalf. And that is all the information we have for you today. I, myself and Rich, really appreciate you all coming and listening to this webinar. I hope it helps. Uh, Rich, what do you have to say? Well, we obviously understand that this is extremely high level. Uh, we tried to touch on 
the areas of the software um, that we feel are applicable to you know folks in the industry. We we highly encourage you if if this piqued any interest uh, to contact us directly, and we'll be following up with you. And we're very happy to provide a a personalized one-on-one -on -one presentation around your specific needs. But again, as Andrew says, we thank you very much for your time. Um, and uh, sorry, Andrew, I'm usually not involved in these. Is there any way they can ask any questions of us at this point? Yeah, so we have a chat feature in our GoToMeeting. So if you guys have any questions that you would like us to answer here on the call, then feel free to chat them in now. If not, we can get in touch after the meeting and we can talk about them then. Absolutely. So we'll give you guys a couple minutes just to type in any of these chat or chat questions. But if you don't have any, that's perfectly fine. We can contact you afterwards. Okay, we're uh, we're not seeing. Oh, have we got a question come through here? Sorry. Go ahead, Sir Andrew. Read that to me. How does the drag and drop work? It appears to be asking to pivot tables, which aren't that easy to master. Uh, I totally understand the question, and it's a very good one. Uh, I think it's it's kind of hard to do uh, without actually showing you the uh, business intelligence tool. It does operate like a pivot table, but it's extremely user friendly. So um, are you able to bring this up, Andrew? Yep. And we could just show quickly what that looks like. Of course. So we'll go into our reporting over here. So profitability is as good an example as any. So we're going to maximize the profitability grid. So basically, the base grid here is showing me my profitability and revenue cost margin and margin percentage by month. Now, if we decided we want to see it by month by customer, we would simply grab customer. Do you want to drive this rich? So we're going to take our now build to customer and drop that into our view here. So now if Andrew were to hit the plus sign there, we see here's customer by territory, by month, by customer. So I apologize for some of the data, but you see here how, how very easy it is. And you see all the fields that sit in those tables listed in alphabetical order on the right hand side and the ability to just simply drag and drop those into our view. I then have the ability to then save that view and make it available to the general user community or I could have that view simply for me. That could be, you know, uh, Cindy's profitability or report. I hope that answers the question. And it looks like we have one more. Okay. So when you give us access to the recording of the session, we will give you access to the recording. So we will put this up on our YouTube page, and from there you'll be able to access it. And of course, if we want to get into some further detail, we really highly encourage you to take on, you know, a 60 to 90 minute one on one presentation to the software or, or even just engage in a conversation and you can ask any specific questions as they relate to your own uh, requirements within your business. Looks like we got one more. How does the application handle retentions for project jobs? and for subcon or from subcontractors? Uh, when you, you say retention, I, I, I assume that means holdbacks. Um, and fully, uh, we handle uh, full uh, retention and uh, holdbacks on any project or job. Uh, you have the ability to uh, do that uh, on a percentage basis, fixed amounts, I, it really is limitless how you can handle that uh, that type of uh, engagement with your clients and subcontractors. I should also point out we support full AIA billing as well within the uh, project application. So 
I think that is it. Unless you guys have any other questions, we'll give you just a few moments to ask yeah. any further questions and then uh, we'll be following up with you, not relentlessly, but we'll certainly follow up with you and uh, yeah. very, very much appreciate your attendance to the webinar this afternoon. Yeah. Okay, thank you again, everyone, and uh, have a great afternoon.